Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here today at Ultimate Boxer 6, the heavyweights. Joined by Mr. Dean White. How are you, sir? How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, let's talk a little bit about Ultimate Boxer 6, the heavyweights. Obviously, it's not the highest level of heavyweights, but that's sort of the point of the competition. You've got a few more well, guys who admitted he used to be, he started his career as a journeyman. Yeah. A couple of young kids in there, a few good backstories. Mm -hmm. Bit of an interesting one. Listen, do you know what? For me, it looks really exciting. You've got the main man, the mad Sofoloski in there, you know what I mean? Listen, with Sofoloski in there, anything can happen. He's the man that's going to put the spanner in a lot of work. He's in there, a you know scary what I mean? geezer, he isn't he? means business. So I remember when my, my bro Dillian fought him and he was swinging for the rafters. He caught Dill with a nice shot and then I think Dill turned up the notches a few uh, notches and got him out of there. But I mean, he's upset the apple cart on many occasions. Many of prospects, like he said, listen, I don't talk much, I fight. <laughs> I want to fight now. <laughs> and he fight everyone up there. So as you saw, listen, he means business. If Jonathan Pilar is the favourite, Jonathan's my guy. He looks good, talks well, and uh, you know, hopefully he does well as well. But you know, I, I can't wait to see that fight. I'm hoping him and Sofoloski in the final in an absolute barnstormer. That would that would that would put Ultimate Boxer on the map, you know. Have a, a, a the heavyweight tournament there and have a, a real real dust up with those two going at it for three rounds. You know what I mean? And uh, the strongest uh, man will be left standing. So yes, it's good. Like you said, there's a few boys up there I've never seen in my life. And uh, obviously Webb's up there. He lost to Sofoloski. And uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, there's a few other guys. There's a few other guys up there. But it's going to be interesting. You know what I mean? Make the best man win. Okay, um, Dillian mm -hmm. announced he'll be fighting Marius Wack on the Saudi Arabia card. He sort of brought, made his own Saudi Arabia announcement a couple of weeks ago. We sort of knew he'd be fighting on it. It was just more <laughs> yeah. about who'd be fighting. Um, yeah, Marius Wack. Yeah, Marius Wack. He's a veteran in the game. He's been in there with the likes of Klitschko and uh, Jarrell Miller and um, a list of who's who, you know what I mean? Obviously, the last few fights he's lost by knockout. He's not as... Um, as drawbacks as he has, uh, was before, and to be honest, it weren't knockout knockouts. It was you know TKO standing or the ref you know jumped in and so on. So for me, I think we'll get a few rounds out of him, and hopefully, um, you know, we can get a spectacular knockout to to show Dylan White is back. You know, it means business. And you know, now the card in Paulie, what's happening? I said now now the card in um now the now, now the card in um now, now the card in um Saudi looks quite stacked. You have got Hunter. On there, you've got uh, Little on there, you've got Joshua and Ruiz, you've got Dylan and what. So there's there's loads of other guys. So I think it's an interesting card and hopefully it lives up to what it is in Saudi Arabia. I want to address a couple of things I've heard people say online. Um, people are saying that Dillian has potentially faced a ban for the failed drug test and that's why he's been back now and it's all been kept under wraps. Nah, I can't comment on that anyway, but... No? I, yeah, I can't comment on that. Only because it's something that seems to come along with every Dillian announcement now, which is obviously where Dillian was, it seems to be quite disappointing. Mm, well, listen, let Dillian, you, you talk to Dillian and he, the rest of the guys about that, but anything to do with um, his issue with the, the, the sample, really I can't comment on, you know what I mean? And he's been advised not to really talk about it, but he was never banned and he could have competed at any stage. So, you know, he just took this opportunity now, so, you know. Okay, um, Saudi, you're going out on Sunday. <laughs> for a massive media week, everyone's going to be there. Yeah, it's going to be um, crazy. Sort of whole boxing world and the whole sporting world is going to be focused on Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Joshua Ruiz. It's going to be. It's going to be. It's huge. Going to be Give me a prediction. As we get nearer, do you feel like? Do you know, it changes. It changes yeah. all the time. You know, in terms of like, not it changes. Like, you know, what I look at is this. Ruiz done a hell of a job on June the first to become the first Mexican champion, and he upset the apple cart in in such a mega mega fashion um, and now Joshua has gone back to the drawing board in terms of re-evaluating himself and saying to himself you know there's things I didn't do maybe I inadvertently underestimated him you know of change of opponent because obviously to face Miller who was 315 pounds or whatever he was he needed to be a little bit more bulky a little bit more muscle to you know to deal with with that kind of strength and obviously um, when you're that muscular, it takes a lot of blood and oxygen to, you know, compete and move around with someone like that. Um, so, it, 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 I think the different styles 
And I don't know, there was lots of rumours about what went on in sparring and whatnot, but he didn't look himself. For me now, what I look at is he's lost a lot of muscle, he's come down in weight, he's drafting in many, many, many different styles of sparring partners and vigorous training stuff. Um, I noticed that he seemed to have someone who was in there that was possibly maybe a wrestling coach because he couldn't handle the, 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 the holding aspect. If you look, I've even watched it this morning where he was caught with shots and he didn't know how to hold and you know turn them and lean on them and use his weight. Um, so I saw he, he, he looked like he brought someone in. He's brought like Angel Fernandez in yeah. there as another coach or someone who can work on because Angel works on a lot of drills. As you see with Isaac Chamberlain, if you watch his stories, he works on loads of drills. So he's, he's bringing him. So you can see he's taking it very, very seriously. Listen. People are stating that this is the end of Anthony Joshua if he loses. So, you know, for him, he's like, listen, this is only the beginning. And he said, even if he does lose, he's going to fight until he's 50. I don't know if he actually means that, so, you know, wholeheartedly. But I mean, listen, he means business anyway. So, you know, he's, um, how you doing, bud? Yes, you good? Um, so he's, he's taking this seriously and um, he's not messing about and he's pulling out all the stops. Can it all gel together so quickly is the answer what we're all going to wait and see. It's only been six months or maybe four months of preparation and bringing everything together. Some things will, will gel and some things won't. We're going to find out only a short time away, only eight days left and we'll find out. I'm going to be rooting for um, Joshua as a British guy. I want him to do well and bring the belts back here because there's mega fights here for my bro, for Fury and even John T. Wilder we can bring across the pond and bring him to Wembley and have some mega fights. Um, we want here to be the mecca of stuff, you know what I mean? We don't want it to go across the pond because if it goes there without him and John Tawada, it's going to be hard as hell to get them belts yeah. back here. So listen, I'm going to be wishing him all the best, him and his team. Um, it is a hard one. My mind swings with pendulums in terms of, I'm saying Joshua, I think he'll be better prepared and he might get a knockout. Um, and then I still think that Andy Ruiz is going to come in and he's going to be so, so super confident because now he's come down in weight also and he's going to believe that he can do it and I, you know, he's going to say, listen, I'm the champ and I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the champ and I'm looking to stay. So he's going to, he had a great game plan in the first fight, going to the body early and then going up to the head and so on. So let's see what happens. But like you said, we're going to have a crazy media frenzy in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I think the pendulum will swing back and forward with a lot of people um, throughout. But um, I'm, going to, I'm going to stick with Joshua in the, in the long haul. How much of a predicament is he in when you consider that his game plan was pretty much spot on until he got clipped by Ruiz. He was keeping him at range and Ruiz was, like you said, frying to the body, but you know, Joshua was in control of the fight. But also, did you need to go out there, go forward, put a statement out? Do you know what? In, 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 Is the win just that important? That I think him just it's not worth taking any risks. the win in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fashion where he knows that he needs to be... Um, more calculative in terms of his approach. Going out and just swinging for the rafters, I don't, I don't advise that would be a good plan because, you know, he done that and you saw what happened when he, he came up second in a lot of the exchanges with um, Ruiz. But obviously, I think he was still mentally tough and was tough because he got up on four occasions. And so we've got to look at that, you know what I mean? People say, oh, he quit, but he managed to get up four times. That's not a quitter's mentality and a quitter's heart, you know what I'm saying? He got up on all the occasions. Even when the judge said, the ref said, he's waved it off, his face was, there was a bit of condensation. There was a bit of, like, no, what do you mean? And then he just kind of backed up and said, you know what? It is what it is, it weren't my night. But I think, for me, I just feel like he needs to be smart. And I feel what he needs to do is keep that distance. And I think the longer the rounds go on, in terms of him and his fitness, because there's always been a question over his fitness. I think he might get Ghana more um, confidence because obviously he was stopped in the seventh round. If he can get past the seventh round and his fitness is still going great, I think he'll garner more um, confidence in that. You know what I mean? Some people say he should walk forward and try and get Ruiz out of there, but I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a great game plan he should try to um, put together. I think he should be smart, box from long, and uh, pick him off and just keep it nice. Only um, if he gets him, you know, really hurt, he wants to step it up a little bit, but very calculated and smart. Don't rush him because you saw what happened. When you get hurt, you're a wounded animal, you're going to swing for the fences, you know what I mean? Okay, did you catch Smith Ryder? I did, you know, and you know the maddest thing, I'm a very, very big, big fan of Callum Smith and I've always praised him highly in the Smith brothers and stuff. I do like them boys and what they've done for boxing as a boxing family, but that fight for me, I don't really know much about Ryder, I'm not going to lie, I've seen him a few times. I did probably feel like he might have nicked it slightly, if, if truth be told. A lot of people are questioning, you know. So you think it was a close fight, full stop? Uh, yeah, I thought it was yeah. a close fight because he was pressing that action. Callum didn't look himself, 
he had an off night. But what, luckily for him, he managed to come away for the win. You know, like Joshua had an off night and he lost. He managed to get away and he goes back to the drawing board. He can't go in there and face the likes of Canelo and perform like that. For him, he's sort of obviously the Canelo is the biggest fight, but for him, is that a fight that you can really see him winning? Uh, do you know what? Before that fight, I, I had him as a, quite a favourite, but you know, everyone's entitled to an off night. If you can win ugly, it's a win, it's a win, it's a win. In the history books, they're not going to remember the effort John Ryder put in. They're just going to look in the column, it's going to have the W. So for him, he needs to go back and reevaluate himself. Possibly even, it could be that he was weight drained, because to me on the scales, it did look a bit gaunt and look a bit drained. That could have been something against him, but he just couldn't keep John Ryder off. So imagine the likes of Canelo pressing him and moving forward and pushing and pushing. It's a hard one, but you know what? I'm always, I'm going to back him, because like I said, I like them Smith brothers. And How would you I, see him against Billy Joe after a performance like that? That's an excellent fight as well, but Billy Joe Saunders is an excellent fighter as well and moves really, really well. Southport, he's going to give anyone nightmares. All right, just finally, Wilder Ortiz. Listen. Is it, quite, is it quite comforting for the heavyweight division to know that there is a blueprint to beat Deontay Wilder? Everyone knows the blueprint, but like Deontay Wilder says, he only needs to be good two, for two seconds. seconds yeah to be racked for the two seconds and you need to be, you know, spot on for the 12 rounds. And, and you know, it's, it's been that case throughout. Everyone know, look, what's, um, Spielka was a, a prime example. Southport was beating, boxing his head off and got caught. Cool. There's a lot of fighters that have fought him and gone in there and, and ended up the same way, you know. But I think for him, you know, I think what happened with Ortiz, because it was like about 10 seconds to the end of the round, I think he switched off and he weren't moving his head at, at that time. And then he got caught with a big shot and he got, you know, he got bloody put to sleep in horrendous fashion, you know what I mean? But listen, Wilder, we need to give him credit. Listen, he's 42 and oh, 41 knockouts. A hell of a record. Dustbin guys, cab drivers, um, Still pizza putting chefs. To sleep. It doesn't matter who it Still is. Putting he's them putting to sleep, those guys yeah. comatose to sleep. And you know what I mean? There's not a lot of people who can do that because even on off nights, some people still go the distance with them and still have, you know what I mean, winning records. But he has been baptising those boys with that equaliser. And listen, he's a nightmare for anyone. He doesn't have the skills to pay the bills, but he sure has the power to flatline any sucker. A lot of people have been putting him sort of up amongst some of the greatest and biggest punches in heavyweight history. Can he's, you back he, that? He's, he's right up there. But listen, you know what you've got to look at in the olden times, you can't really compare because those boys fought different calibre of guys. I know he's fought Ortiz twice and he's fought um, Fury once. You've got to give him credit for that. Those are top, top boys. But the rest of the 39 other opponents, you know, they weren't really at, at, at the draw. Stavern, what a joke, went straight into the punch. Dominic Brazil, another one, walked straight into the punch. You know what I mean? Not the greatest. And those boys are quite tough and durable boys, but I just felt they maybe went in there with the wrong energy. They made Wilder get under their skin and forget about their game plan, thinking they're going to come forward. But they forgot about that Alabama power boy. <laughs> one thing Fury won't do is let Wilder get under his skin. Fury is the man yeah. to confuse him and um, discombobulate him. That's going to be a good fight, but... It, it, it Would you favour Fury in that fight? Excuse me, I definitely favour Fury because he boxed his head off last time, didn't get the decision. Um, it's either going to be... Wilder's going to have a bit more confidence and he's going to know that Fury can't hurt him. He's either going to walk forward and take more chances because he, you know, he was probably a bit um, sketchy in the beginning. But then, yet, then you've got Fury who came from like nearly a three-year layoff now he's had a few more fights, he'll be more confident also that he's saying, you know what, I've took his best shots and got up and rise from the ashes. So it's an interesting one. Yet again, um, I'll, I'm going to back Fury on that. But yet again, I wouldn't be surprised if Deontay Wilder got a knockout. But Fury is a hell of a mover and boxer and he's got up from them two punches. But I'm going to go with him and I want him to go out there and bring the belts back, man. Listen, I'm back in the U my UK, guys, anytime you ask me, virtually. There's only a few that I might go against the green with, but I'm always going to back the boys. Dean, thank you very much for giving me some of your time and Thanks I will see you much, in man. Birmingham. Yeah. Top man.